Bieber and we are at Next uh, 2012 in Berlin. So um, this is a web and startup conference yep. and uh, what's your main takeaways this last of the two days? I, I think that it's both really exciting but also incredibly scary how the media image has changed or is changing for our kids. And uh, you have to ask yourself if it's, uh, what would you say, actually a good thing or a bad thing that, I mean, most parents are actually trying to, for some uh, kind of reason, to keep their kids away from the computer because they think that it's a passive thing. And there's a lot of indicators down here that's actually shown that it's a really active thing. and. Um, there's a lot of things they could be doing and a lot of things they could be creating with computers. And it's the first, I mean, we have been talking about it for a couple of years, but it's the first real sign of it, right? Yeah. And it's also a change, quickly changing media landscape where uh, we talk about new channels. Uh, yesterday, there was a TV discussion uh, where, where uh, basically they said that TV is uh, slowing down and we do other things while we're watching. It's, it's gone from, from a main medium to a uh, uh, accompanying media mm. when we surf the web and so on. Mm. Uh, but also when it comes to kids, I saw this fantastic presentation today by an Indian Icelandic researcher who has a company called MindGame.is where she develops uh, mind control games and she said that she uh, they, they see a toying with the idea of using mind control mm. games for instance you can bend a spoon like Urit Geller uh, with your mind through the iPad and a mind mm. re uh, uh, you know electrical reader mm. on your head and that could be a way of uh, teaching kids with attention deficit or disorder to both concentrate and to relax through mm. the game. It's interesting. And we also see new impulse methods when it comes to uh, eye tracking. For instance, Swedish company Tubi uh, presented. Uh, we have voice. So, not in the future, but in three years time, you will start your car with your voice. You will uh, search on the web with your voice, you will throw away the remote control to your TV if you have it left uh, and use your voice instead. So I think we will go and see a lot of technologies that have been talked about but now actually are mm. being put into action. And I think, I think that's a, a really good definition of Next is that uh, it is creativity being put into action and we have, uh, you, you, you mentioned TV that um, that is kind of like a subsidiary kind of channel. Yeah. I have seen uh, magazines down here who are uh, mainly living on the internet where uh, the, the magazine in itself may be only published what, like once a year and they're make, making really really good progress and people are reading their stuff and I guess I guess that's what's really important the whole connectedness of it all you know not as much the digital versus uh, the in real life thing, but that everything is interconnected, yeah. which is which was all the so the main topic for the conference. Yeah, and we also had a lot of discussion, and, and in several presentations, this uh, new paradigm crept up that on the same day that Kodak, the, the old photography and film company, filed for bankruptcy, uh, Instagram was sold to Facebook for one billion dollars. And of course it has to do with involvement, the, the ability to be able to engage your users. Um, it has to do with the disruption of technology, mm. of new sales channels and so on. And I think it's imperative for companies to be part of this uh, technology because if you set, just sit back and wait for a broad customer mm. adoption, you will be too late. You will, won't have the research on place, you won't have the products or services in place. One of the things that I have noticed a lot about down here compared to other tech companies is, is that the industry has matured a lot. So um, the technology industry is, 
basically turning into more of an ecosystem yeah. of both money and creativity. And I think as a startup, if you have a startup out there, even though that investment is really key to what you're doing, you need to focus on the product, you need to focus on the users. Because if you start focusing on yourself too much, if you start getting too much into this whole, well, kind of like a Klondike yeah. <laughs> of, uh, of, of, the, of the tech industry, then, I mean, you might losing your red thread and, and the money at the same time. And I think that that's a really important takeaway. There are some startups down here where I was like thinking, okay, that's kind of scary. Like, get back, get back and involve your users. And, yeah, and, kind and, of and there's a lot of hype within the same uh, verticals all the time. We've seen uh, mm. sharing, we have seen health, we have seen so on, but very little business to business applications, yeah. uh, very little truly disruptive uh, things. But one thing that was very interesting was on, the, on one of the v, many, I would say, VC panels regarding uh, startup funding is that the business plan is out and what uh, VCs and CD angels see more and more is actually startups coming with alpha releases. Um, so you need to be able to get funding today, I would say, you need to be able to prove you both have a product and that you can build it, uh, and preferably also uh, users. Mm. I, I, th I think that's really, that, that's really key. And also, like, I, think, I think it's a very good idea to actually, or this is a perfect opportunity to, to actually tell people to, to get coding, get yeah. building. I mean, we have the tools, you have the tools out there. I mean, it's just to start out and get something in shape and maybe you can't make it into a functional prototype yourself but the process of actually going through these thoughts of actually having something that's more prepared in your mind mentally to actually launch is is, is really important now like the, the funding is not in the business plan on the napkins it is in the functional prototypes mm. And I also think that that's a, a very scary situation for, for mature companies because today we see a lot of people doing startups, doing prototypes, do it, building products, whereas traditional companies often uh, outsource this new development to somebody else. Uh, it could be a, a web agency or uh, an IT company and so on. And, and the product isn't their core product, so it's just something on top, uh, mm. something that's supposed to be a bit fun, mm. uh, especially within the mobile space. I think so too, yeah. And, and I would say, like, if you're not don't, having mobile as your first channel today, you will be dead in a few years. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Or a connectedness. Yeah. <laughs> Post digital people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it, Yeah. I guess. So, um, look forward to next year's next. Yeah, me too. Bye-bye from Berlin. Bye-bye.